I'm Graham Howell. I was styling in charge of the styling design department at Crewe for a number of years. And after a lot of experience on riding bicycles, I've chosen this actual design from Alex Moulton as, as, as probably a good all-rounder and an example of radical design thinking. Against the backdrop of, 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 of the bicycle frame, which is understood and was successful and continued to be successful, Alex Moulton came along and just tore up the, just literally tore up the rule book. He, it was an amazing thing to do. He started doing it in the 1960s with, a, with very small wheels. And this is actually, if you like, a second generation uh, where he's using a, almost like a, a well, it's a, it's a space frame, really. That, that, there isn't a frame as such. It's just a series of tubes, a bit like a, a birdcage Maserati. We might just show people so they can see. So the secret really is in triangulation because everything is triangulated and incredibly it's, it's, it's very, very stiff and yet you can still take a kingpin out of here and, and, and pull the bike into two. So you can go into the boot of a car. Um, I don't choose to do that because I don't need to, it, but it's, it's, it, it's an amazing achievement. Um, and because you're using smaller wheels, because you're using smaller wheels, you, for Turing are very good because I've actually put a luggage rack on this because you can put a very big bag here and a very big bag here, which you can't do on a normal bike because of the size of the wheels. And it's a very, very stable frame. Yeah, so, it's also got, I mean, aside from the space frame, yeah. it's got very interesting suspension. Yeah, it's got, it's got, it's got leading link, which, which is sort of a motorcycle idea, uh, front suspension, and it's adjustable. So you can adjust this piston that goes up and down. Um, the, the, back, it, the back really is very similar to what he did for the classic, mold, uh, for the classic Mini. So the whole Mini design. So at the connection, tell us the connection between Mini, uh, Moulton. Yeah. Alex Moulton and Alec Isagonis were sort of, they knew each other well and they both respected each other. He was the designer of the Mini. The Mini. The, the, the Austin 1100 and Morris 1100, uh, the Maxi, I mean, all, all that era of, of British Leyland vehicles, I mean, right from 1959, right, right the way through to the 80s, were all using molten suspension, because it was very compact. And of course, with the hydroelastic, they were actually interconnected. So the wheels would move, if, if the front wheel was pushed up, the back wheel would come down to, to take the load. I mean, it's, cl it's clever stuff. But the, the strange thing is that, it's not strange, it's understandable, because, because Moulton was essentially a, a sort of a, a, a curious mind who liked to pursue things. He wasn't, he wasn't just stopping at cars, he just liked bicycles, because he understood their efficiency. I mean, a bicycle is incredibly efficient. And he, he, that's one of the reasons he loved the things. And of course, a very wealthy man, and because he loved engineering, he was also a Rolls Royce owner. So he, he owned a Silver Cloud and a Shadow. And I'm very fond because the, 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 the sh working on his, 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 I met him a couple of times, but he, he was a very lanky chap. And he used to drive with his, with his, with his knee against the, the, the door trim pad. And he, he always had a special block made which if you can imagine an old fashioned blackboard duster, nicely trimmed in leather with piping uh, on, the door, on the door trim pad. And that was my first job. I was sort of hot shot hull from the Royal College, meant to be doing a, a, a Bentley coupe or something. And then there was <laughs> this, this knee was... pad, was, but it went down the production line. So, you know, great really. It's the first thing that ever went into, into production. But so somewhere there's a shadow running around with this, with this slightly strange block on the door, which no one actually probably knows what it's the, for. What it's for. But that, it's yes. Moulton's knee pad. So, but it's a sign of a very wealthy man who, who, who bought Rolls Royces, not, not as a display of wealth, but a display of engineering excellence, which is a kind of a key point. Yes. Think about it. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't just being ostentatious. He, he, he genuinely knew that the engineering of the Rolls Royce was the, probably the best you could do at the time. Yes. I mean, that's what, that was the appeal to him. 
Um, but I love the idea of someone going from, from bicycles to Rolls Royces and on an absolute level playing field and interrogating both ends of that playing field to see what's the best solution. Great. And of course, Royce was an engineer yes. and Rolls Royce was engineering led, even though people think of it as a luxury car company, Rolls Royce itself thought of itself as an engineering company. Absolutely. And, and I mean, if you, if you think about it, Rolls Royce really was a chassis, a chassis car. He, that, was, that was the main interest for him, was the, the, was the running of the actual chassis. The, the, the body and so forth was usually done by coach builders. Yes. But, but the, the, the chassis of the Rolls Royce, that's where the legend was founded because it was so good. And perhaps we can talk later on about the, an armored car, which was an we amazing will. story. Yeah. But, but I, still, I still look at the molten and a lot of things, a lot of the bits of the jigsaw about creativity click into place. Well, it's just beautifully designed. <laughs> I, I would uh, advise anyone to go on their website, and they, but they, they're not cheap. No. They no. go from about no. 2,000. They go from, they're talking about 2,000 ish to, uh, well, the last time I saw it was like 16,000. I, th I think they've and, gone up even. And they've then. probably gone beyond that because they're just being bought for collectors. And but course, they're still being made. You can still buy still them, buy you can them. still cycle them. And, and, and frankly, a lot, of, a lot of Moltens, if you go to a museum, like it, design museums, a science museum, you'll probably see a Molten somewhere because it's acknowledged to be revolutionary thinking which and works <laughs> as as a designer what sometimes people say oh smaller wheels you have to put more work into yeah. pedaling them yeah. is that it doesn't make a in this a, a smaller wheel will accelerate faster so yeah. in traffic in london that's this is why the, the, the things like the, the, the Brompton Folder, for instance, they're very, very good, and, and the Molten are very good in traffic, where you, 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 you're always changing speed and direction and everything. So, so they will accelerate very well. You can argue that the, a, bigger, a bigger wheel will hold its momentum more, <coughs> but you don't get something for nothing. Yeah. And, and you've got to put the effort into a big wheel to get it to move in the first place. Whereas with this, you, you really feel it's fast off, off from go, you know? Yes. Get and up. you, it's got an eight speed hub. Yeah, I mean, you can, keep on, you can keep on putting more and more gears on them and you can go up to 11 gears. And of course, you're really starting to get quite a, quite a fast bike in the end. Um, but it's, it's, it's a sort of a general purpose bike, but yeah. I, I find it just aesthetically pleasing. Oh, it's a lovely and I, I looking I love bike. the idea of someone challenging something that was really set in concrete. You know, I mean, there was no debate. No, yeah. This was the answer to a bicycle. And yet, <laughs> Moulton came along and said, well, okay, but you could do it slightly differently. And is that expensive to make? Is that why more bikes don't have that design? It's more difficult to make. Um, yeah, I, I think you you probably got, got the point there. You're talking about, in this case, I believe you're talking about hand brazing. So you, every joint, Every joint has probably got a got a, a human hand somewhere near it, whereas with with a something like a diamond frame, you can you can probably mass produce them uh, on jigs, yeah. you know, preheated and yeah. just slot them together. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's the fact that you can actually break it into two, and it's you know, and it's still incredibly rigid. That that is a, quite an achievement. It is amazing, and this. This is what you like to use. <laughs> yes. Well, it's after, after, I mean, I've cycled all my life, really. And I, I was brought up by a keen cyclist. Yes. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm using it now as the only bike I want to ride. Brilliant. You know, if I want to go out for a breath of fresh air, I'll, I'll, I'll just go out on this.